I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The city announced the Invest Northeast initiative at a news conference outside Lycan Square Park last week. Invest Northeast is a new redevelopment initiative aimed at promoting economic growth and property beautification in the historic Northeast District. It involves a unique partnership among the city, historic Northeast property owners, and several major Kansas City organizations, including UMKC and the Economic Development Corporation of Kansas City. These, and, and this is only a mock-up for purposes of today, but you'll be seeing more and more of these signs, more and more examples of that logo all over the Northeast area. Our desire is to bring the Northeast together in a way that sends a message to everyone who lives there and everyone who comes to visit. The historical character that, this, that the Northeast enjoys, but we're moving ahead. And this is one more example of that. All right, so here, look, help me with this countdown, if you will, from 10, okay? Ten. Two, one. The city used $250,000 in one-time revenues from a previous Historic Northeast project to fund Invest Northeast. Learn more at hnekc.com. Registered neighborhood organizations may apply for a Rebuild KC grant to fund neighborhood improvement projects up to $5,000. The city's Rebuild KC Neighborhood Mini Grant Program provides grants to applicants whose neighborhood projects foster partnerships and build upon existing assets. All grants require a dollar-for-dollar -dollar matching contribution of volunteer labor, donated materials, or in-kind services. Learn more or get an application by visiting kcmo.gov and entering Rebuild KC into the search bar. Mayor Sly James recently challenged Kansas City businesses to benchmark their energy consumption with Energy Star's free portfolio manager. The challenge begins August 1st and runs through February 27th of 2015, and this aims to help 50 buildings achieve Energy Star certification. This challenge is part of the City Energy Project, a 10-city effort to boost energy efficiency in city buildings. Kansas City businesses interested in improving the building's energy efficiency and earning Energy Star certification can sign up by going to the city's website at kcmo.gov and entering City Energy Project in the search bar. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Did you know that the wonderful the Great Garrison Community Center is 100 years old. For 100 years, it has been serving this community. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for coming out today, and thank you for helping us celebrate the 100-year anniversary of Garrison Community Center. And uh, 123 years, I think, is the right number of parks and recreation. Uh, of course, all of this would not be possible for us to do without the support of the community and without the support of our city council. And I'd like to introduce uh, Councilwoman Jan Markson to say a few words and thank her. Uh, she's been instrumental in helping us get the funding for the new uh, safe room that will double as a gymnasium on the back side of the building that we hope to start yet this fall. So without any further comments, uh, Councilwoman Markson. Great, thank you, and my colleague, Councilman Glover, is here too. So uh, I just want to say what a pleasure it is to represent you, to represent this area. We want to make some improvements to the Garrison Community Center, and um, we applaud 100 years of service to the young people and the seniors and all the residents of this area. So it's just my pleasure to be your representative and to help make sure that this community center continues to thrive. So thanks for being here and enjoy the day in this beautiful area. Jim, as always, you said it well. I too am happy to be here and wish the community center well in the future and hope if you need help or the community center needs help in the future that you let us know. Hey, hey, 
Hi, my name is Floyd Peoples and I'm the Fire Marshal for the Kansas City, Missouri Fire Department. Today we're going to talk about escape plans in the home. Having an emergency plan in case of a fire is just as important as having a smoke detector. Exit drills in the home, or EDITH, can help people prepare for an emergency. Most home fires occur at night when people are the least prepared. Home fires can become a disaster if you and your family are not familiar with how to escape during an emergency. To design your fire escape plan, sketch the floor plan of your home on a piece of paper. Indicate on the plan all doors, windows, and other areas from which you could escape from each room in your home. Draw arrows to indicate the normal exits, which would be your primary escape route. With an alternate color, draw arrows to indicate a secondary exit from each room in the home. Choose a location outside the home where family members should meet once they have safely escaped. A neighbor's front yard or sidewalk may be an ideal meeting place. Your fire escape plan may look great on paper, but does it really work? Regular exit drills in the home will allow you to test the plan and make adjustments as needed. When practicing your exit drills in the home, remember to use alternate escape routes as well. Children should be closely supervised during drills in the home and no one should take unnecessary chances. As a reminder, an operating smoke detector should be located in each bedroom and on every level of the home, including the basement. Everyone should know the location of telephones in the home and where to find a telephone outside of the home. It's very important that children also know the 911 phone number in order to report a fire or other emergency. So let's summarize. Take the following steps to help stay safe in case of a fire. Prepare a fire escape plan, install and maintain smoke detectors, examine your home for fire hazards, and take steps to prevent a fire before it occurs. To watch additional videos about 311 or other city services, check the FYI KC webpage at www.kcmo.gov and then search for FYI KC. I'm Floyd Peoples wishing you a safe day. Thank you. I'm Terry Reiner with Parks and Recreation, and most of you, probably all of you, know Mark McHenry. He was out of town today, so he sends his uh, congratulations to you. Uh, I just want to take a minute to thank you. Um, this neighborhood really is what we hope that we can build just about you know, anywhere in town as far as community support. Um, 120 yards of mulch spread this morning in no time at all and uh, the eyes and ears on the park and all the thousands of hours of the moving honeysuckle. So uh, great job and congratulations on really being kind of the model for what we hope in community involvement with Parks and Recreation. So um, with that, I'd like to uh, ask Kurt to come up and give a few words. And again, from Parks and Recreation, just thank you very much for all that you do to support this park and this community. Thanks everybody for uh, coming this afternoon, perhaps uh, especially our target audience of children, of the people who live around Roanoke Park, and I want to make sure everybody understands where this came from. It's a result of the efforts of a lot of people who aren't here today, but were five years ago when we began this project and invested what we're approaching uh, 10,000 hours of volunteer work. And this, the Parks Department has told us, is in response to their appreciation 
for the work that our volunteers have done in the park, and we get this wonderful new uh, playground as uh, evidence of the productivity of our public-private enterprise with Parks and Rec Department that began with our volunteers hauling, cutting, hauling honeysuckle to the curb, parks picking it up, and you can see how it's grown. There's new lighting to observe, new sidewalks in the park, and there's more to come. And, and one of the exciting things about this, we, each event we have, there are more people to come out. Each work event we have, there are more people to come out. And I'm especially excited because our project has attracted not only new individuals, but new organizations. Uh, most recently, in the, in the uh, person and form of uh, health projects, who uh, has gotten so excited about our project, they not only moved Matthew and Jesse into the park, but they've moved their business into the park, and they have provided space for their own park conservancy offices, so we are official. And uh, that uh, activity that they've had in developing some ideas for future of, of, of the park has attracted a company that was spawned from the Make It Right Foundation, which you're perhaps familiar with, Brad Pitt's project that's been going on in New Orleans. And that organization has come to uh, our, our group, and now there are 12 designers that are volunteering their time to help us develop ideas in a cohesive way that fitted with the master plan of the park. So uh, enjoy, uh, have fun. Thanks to Rachel Lindsay for organizing the event this afternoon and for the work they do. In uh, I'd li I like to add one thing. Parks is about community. We are so fortunate to be here. This 36 acre Midtown Jewel of a park. And what we love most about these parks, Mojo and Jack, tell us. We love playground. Playground! Thank you, Parks Department. Okay, um, we're going to have all the children walk slowly over to the slide. And the person whose name is going to be drawn and called will be the first kid down the slide. We're going to have to pose for a few minutes before that happens to take some pictures. So we need to have patience. But here it is. No pressure. No pressure. Where is Hudson Harms? Hudson! <laughs> The health department will hold a back-to-school health fair on Saturday, August 9th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. This fair is open to all ages and will provide immunizations, dental assessments, sports physicals, well child checks, STD testing, blood pressure screenings, and breast exams. Appointments are required for the sports physicals and well child checks, but all other services are provided on a first-come, first-served basis. The health department is located at 2400 Troost Avenue. For more information or to schedule an appointment, call 816-513-6108. The city's quarterly Neighborhood Leaders Roundtable meeting will take place on Thursday, August 28th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. at the Southeast Community Center. This quarterly meeting brings city and neighborhood leaders together with residents to discuss neighborhood issues and the city's neighborhood services. The August 28th meeting will present information on land bank properties and the receivership program, plus a presentation from Legal Aid of Western Missouri on how neighborhood associations can sue negligent homeowners of vacant or blighted properties. For more information about any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for The Weekly Report. That does it for this edition of The Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.